Hello students, I am Dr. Gajendra Purohit and you are watching my YouTube channel where I upload videos for Engineering, Mathematics, BSc. So if you are preparing for any competitive exam where higher mathematics is asked, my YouTube channel is very helpful for you. So I have just started discrete mathematics and today I will discuss with you what is relation and how we find whether the relation is equivalent or not. Because the concept here is reflexive, symmetric and transitive, I will teach you how to check it. You can watch the videos by clicking on this i tab. So let's watch it. First of all, we will talk about relation. When we have two sets and we have defined a function between those two sets, then the set of Cartesian product is in relation or not. Now let's focus on the relation, which involves three key concepts, reflexivity, transitivity and symmetry. We examine the relation to see if it exhibits any or all of these properties. If all three are present, we have what is known as an equivalence relation. For example, if I say that we have an A set and a B set and the elements given in the A set set are natural numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and B also has a set of natural numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It is given in this way. So the function that is defined here is y is equal to x square. So we know that if we put the value of x here as 1, then its square will be 1, right? If we put 2, then its square will be 4. If we put 3, then its square will be 9. So the relation we will have here will be such that 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 4, right? Similarly, 3 goes to 9. So this is the relation we have. Now how do we check that the relation that we have here is reflexive, symmetric or transitive? I will tell you now. Plus, how do we check the domain and the range of this? Like if I want to tell you a little bit about this type of element is called domain. And the elements that are connected to this are called as range. Like what will be the range here? It will be 1, then 4, then 9, then 16, then 25, then 36, right? So what will we have? We will have the range and all the elements that we have here, all of them are in the codomain, right? All the elements we have here are codomain and all those that are getting connected with the elements are range set, right? So these are the things that we need to see. Now if we see here, I already told you domain range that if we have two sets and both the sets relate to each other with some or the other kind of function, then the elements of A are domain and the elements of B which connects with the elements of A are range set and the remaining elements are codomain. For example, we have this relation given and you have to find out what is domain will be here. Then the element on the first position will show the domain like 1 and 2 are the domain and the elements on the second position will show the range, right? This is something to pay attention to. Now we will talk about properties. What relation we have, whether it is a reflexive relation or not. Reflexive relation means that a relation R is reflexive. If X belongs to A, then what should be XX? It should be in R. If XX is in R, then what do we have it as? It is reflexive. For example, if we see here, it is given 1, 2 and 1, 2, 3, right? If we have defined a relation with this, it is 1, 1, 2, 2 and 1, 3, right? So you can see that this is the element of A and 1 should be mapped to 1 and 2 should be mapped to 2, right? And if they are mapping, then all right. But 3 is not there. So it is okay. If 1, 3 is being an extra here, if we have this, then it will be reflexive. Let's say we have been given 1, 2. And here we have 1, 2, 3. And y is equal to x square. Let's say we have this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, right? If we take 1, then it goes to 1. And if we take 2, it goes to 4. So the relation here will be 1, 1. And here it will be 2, 4. And this kind of relation will not be reflexive because we are not getting 2, 2, right? If there is 2, we should be getting a 2. If we are getting 2, 2, then this relation would have been a reflexive relation. So this type of relation which is not reflexive is called an irreflexive relation. This is what we need to pay attention to. Let's move ahead. Next, we will talk about the relation, whether it is a symmetric one or not. So the concept of symmetry is that if we have any element A, B belongs to R, then what should B, A belong to? It should belong to R. For example, if I say 1 and 2 in front of you and we have 1, 2. Now here let's take 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's understand that if I say that we have been given a relation, we have not defined any function. 
we have this element 1 comma 1 then we have 1 comma 2 then I have 2 comma 1 then we have 2 comma 3 then we have 2 comma 4 right this is how it is given so you can see it here 2 comma 3 now you can check whether this relation is symmetric or not 1 comma 1 is there 1 comma 2 is there then 2 comma 1 should also be there now if 2 comma 3 is there then 3 comma 1 should also be there but you can see that we don't have 3 here so 3 comma 1 cannot be there this means that this relation is not symmetric if by chance we only had these elements 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 is there and 2 comma 1 is there then this would have been symmetric because 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 is also there right I'm giving you one more example if there is 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 2 comma 3 the relation 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 and 2 comma 2 right if 1 comma 2 is there 2 comma 1 is also going to be there and 2 comma 2 is the same element if 1 comma 2 belongs to R then 2 comma 1 should also belong to R if this happens then we have a symmetric relation we will talk about transitive relation what is a transitive relation a relation R is transitive if X Y belongs to R and Y Z belongs to R then in that case X Z should also belong to R if this is the case then it is called a transitive relation let us take an example suppose we have a set 1 comma 2 and another set 1 comma 2 comma 3 and we have a given an R relation in which we have an element 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 and 1 comma 1 so this much is what we have been given so students 1 comma 2 is going with it 2 comma 1 is going with it and if we remove this then 1 comma 1 is also going with it right if x comma y y comma z belongs to r and then if we remove y then x should also belong to r this way if we remove these two then 1 comma 1 should also belong to r if this happens then such relation is known as transitive relation i'll give you one more example for this which is using the less than concept one is smaller than two and if two is less than four then one will be less than four so this relation here will be transitive if any relation satisfies all these three conditions, that is, it is reflexive, it is symmetric, it is transitive, then such relation is known as an equivalence relation. Let me give you an example. Suppose I have taken a set here. You can see that it is 1, 2. And we have taken a set B here, which is 1, 2, 3. Now we have taken a relation here. And we have taken that relation here as 1, 1. Then 1, 2 then 2 comma 1. If you want to find out whether this relation is an equivalence or not, then first we look at reflexive. If we have 1 comma 1, which means that if 1 is going with it, we should have 1 comma 1, which we do have. We have 2 comma 1 and 1 comma 2. See here, even if we had 2 comma 2, then this relation here would have been reflexive because it has 2. So for any element in the set, its corresponding image element should also be present in the relation, right? So now I'll just remove it. And I'll add 2 comma 2 here. I'm adding 2 comma 2 here. Let's check it out now. Now it will be reflexive. Now let's talk about symmetry. In symmetry, 1 comma 1, if 1 comma 2 is going, then 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2 is also going. It is symmetric. So we have this and this too. Now we will talk about whether it is transitive or not. So what happens in transitive? Whenever we have this, we will remove this. 1 comma 2 is going here. Yes, 1 comma 2 is going here. If we see here, then 1 comma 1 is going with it too. So if we see here, all four elements satisfy the transitive property. This means this relation will be transitive. This means this relation will be an equivalence relation. This way we can understand it very easily. Now we will talk about some questions. The first question we have here is A is equal to 2 comma 3 comma 4 and B is equal to 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 comma 7. We have been told that assume a relation R from A to B such that x comma y belongs to r when x divides y this means x will divide y and that will be the required relation right let's try to understand it by a venn diagram so here we have 2 comma 3 comma 4 and here we have 3 comma 4 comma 5 6 and 7 so now which numbers are currently being divided by 2 so 2 is dividing 4 and 2 is dividing 6 so the relation that we'll get will be 2 comma 4 and the other one we'll have will be 2 comma 6. Now let's talk about 3. Which numbers will 3 divide? 3 will divide 3 and 6. So here we will have here 3 comma 3 and 3 comma 6. Now let's see which number 4 divides. 4 will divide only 4. So it will be 4 comma 4. Now if we have been asked that what is its domain, then whatever comes at its first position will be its domain. 
So 2 comma 3 and 4 are coming at first positions. So 2 comma 3 and 4 will be its domain. If we talk about range, then what will be our range? Whatever is connecting here will be the range. So 4 is connecting, 3 is connecting and 6 is connecting. This 0 should not be here. So we will have 3 comma 4 comma 6. This will be the range. If someone asks you what the codomain is, then the codomain is 3 comma 4 comma 5 and 6 and 7, right? Now you have to find out whether this relation is reflexive or not. If you want to find out, then to be reflexive, first of all 2 comma 2 should come in it, which is not there. 3 comma 3 is coming, but if 6 is coming, then 6 comma 6 should come, right? So if you want to see whether this relation here is reflexive or not, if we have 2, then we should also have 2 comma 2, which is not present here. If it is 3, then 3 comma 3. 4 comma 4 should be there and it is there and if 2 comma 2 was also there then this relation would have been reflexive but it is not reflexive if we want to know if this is symmetric or not then for symmetry if we have 2 comma 4 then 4 2 should also be there but we don't have 4 comma 2 which means this is not symmetric so it will be transitive because if we have 2 comma 4 then 2 comma 4 is also there if we have 3 comma 6 then 3 comma 6 is also there now you'll say that sir if 2 comma 6 is there then it should contain 6 comma 2 also if it has both 2 comma 6 and 6 comma 2 then we'll see that 2 comma 2 should be there but since it is not there let's take a few more examples and try to understand this it is given here that to show that this relation a comma b where a comma b belongs to z and a minus b is divisible by 3 so this is an equivalence relation or not. So first of all, we will talk about reflexive. So we know that reflexive means that A comma A should belong to R. This means we will take the same element. So the same element means A minus A. So A minus A will be 0 and 0 is divisible by 3. This means that A comma A will belong to R. So this will be reflexive. Now let's talk about symmetric. Symmetry says that if a comma a belongs to R, sorry, symmetry says that if a comma b belongs to R, then b comma a should also belong to R. This means that if a minus b is divisible by 3, then b minus a should also be divisible by 3, which is true, right? If I tell you 2 out of 5 is gone, then 3 is left and 3 is divisible by 3. So 2 minus 5, that is minus 3, it is also divisible by 3. So it will be symmetric, right? We can understand it this way. Next, we will talk about transitive. If we have A comma B belongs to R, we have B comma C belongs to R, then we should have A comma C too belongs to R. So if the difference between these two elements is divisible by 3, and the difference between these two elements is divisible by 3, then the difference between A comma C should also be divisible by 3. Let's take an example. Let's suppose that the difference between 5 and 2 is divisible by 3. Now we see here 2 comma 8. The difference between these, that is 6, 2 is divisible by 3. This means that 5 and comma 8 should also go belongs to R. This means its difference should be divisible by 3 and its difference is minus 3 which is divisible by 3. So transitive properties will be satisfied easily. But if we are trying to prove it mathematically then A B belongs to R, B comma C belongs to R and we know that the difference between A and B is divisible by 3 and the difference between B and C is divisible by 3. So if we do the sum of these two then B will be cancelled by B and we will be left with A minus C because it is divisible by 3 and it is divisible by 3 then their sum will also be divisible by 3. So we can see here that A minus C is is divisible by 3. So A comma C will also belong to R. This means that all three properties are satisfied here. This means that R will be an equivalence relation. Let's come to the next question. What is the next question saying? This is a very good question. If R is transitive and reflexive, this means R is transitive and reflexive on A and let T be the relation on A such that A, B is in T. This means that there is such relation and if A, B will be in T, only when A, B and B, A will be in R, right? If AB and BA are in R, then AB will be in T. And if this is the case, then you'll have to prove that T is an equivalence relation. So first of all, we'll discuss if it is reflexive or not. And for reflexive, we need same elements, which means a comma A should be in T. If A comma A is in T, by definition, then we know that it will be in T. When it's AB and BA will be in R. This means that A comma A and A because if A comma A will be in T, then where this should be? It should belongs to R. And because it is given that R is reflexive, what is the definition of reflexivity? It is that A comma A should be in R, right? So since R is reflexive, A comma A will go in R because R is reflexive. And if this is the case, it will go in T and thus T will also be reflexive. Secondly, we talk about symmetry. What is the definition of symmetry? It is that if A comma B is in T, then we should have B comma A too in T, right? So by definition, if A comma B is in T, pay attention. 
if a comma b is in t then a comma b and b comma a should be in r right and if a comma b and b comma a are in r then we can also write them swapping their places we can write it as b comma a and a comma b will be in r then b comma a will go in t so a comma b is in t b comma a is in t so this relation will be a symmetric relation now we will talk if it is transitive or not so when we have to prove if t is transitive or not by t being transitive it means that we have to prove that a comma b is in t and b comma c is in t it implies that a comma c should also be in t but we know the definition that if a comma b is in t it means that a comma b comma b a should be in r remember this was the definition if this is in r then this will go in t so we will see here that if b comma c is in t then it means that b comma c and c comma b will be in r now let's focus on them let's focus on them one by one let me take this let me take a comma b and this this means that because these two are in r and these two are in r four of these are in r so a comma b and b comma c i'm taking these two if these are in r this two is in r and this two is in r and r is given as transitive then it means that a comma c will also go to r by the transitive property now let's focus on these let's take this and this so i'll write it as c comma b and b comma a these are in r and because r is transitive and we have b in common then c comma a will also go in r now we know that a comma c now pay attention a comma c is going in r and c comma a is going in r so if this happens then in such case what will happen if this happens a comma c will go in t and if a comma c goes in t then it will be proved as transitive very easily so this way it can be proved very easily let's see the next question what the next question is saying r is a relation on the set of integers such that a comma b belongs to r and 3a plus 4b is equal to 7n which means if these are added then the answer will be a multiple of 7 where n is an integer then prove that r is an equivalence relation so first of all we will take reflexive this means we will show that a comma a is going in r if we take a comma a then the answer to this addition will become 7a ultimately it is a multiple of 7 and if it is a multiple of 7 then it means that this can easily be proved as reflexive now we talk about symmetric so symmetry means that if a comma b is going in r then b comma a should also go in r and if this happens then this relation will be symmetric so here let's take that a comma b belongs to r and if a comma b belongs to r then 3a plus 4b will be equal to 7n now what we will do here is that we will prove that b comma a is going in r In that case we are writing b comma a then we will take 3b plus 4a now we can write 3b plus 4a like this what i have done is i have written 3b as 7b minus 4b because this is what we are getting as a difference and i have written 4a as 7a minus 3a so we will write these two here and we will have minus common here now it is given that this is a multiple of 7 so if this is a multiple of 7 and this two is a multiple of 7 we can take out 7 as its common which means that this two is a multiple of 7 this means that b comma a will go in r now we have to prove that this relation here is transitive so what we need to do for transitive is that a comma b is in r and b comma c is in r then we will have a comma c too in r so this is very easy and we can do it very easily so if a comma b is in r then we have this if b comma c is in r then we have this and then add these two if we add these two then we will have 3a then 4b and this will become 7 we'll do this later to get 7 and if we add these we will get 7m plus 7n now what we will do we have to find out 3a and 4c because we have to show that a comma c is going in r right so we will take this value on that side and when we take it there the 7b will become minus 7b and then we can take out 7 as its common this makes it a multiple of 7 and if it is a multiple of 7 then it means that a comma c will go in r this way it will be transitive so it satisfies all three properties which means that it is reflexive symmetric and transitive hence it will be an equivalent relation so it can be proved easily so students if you are willing to watch more such videos of discrete mathematics you can find the playlist here if you don't know about my new channel where i post short tricks for iit jam csir net and gate you can check out the playlist of my new channel here and you can subscribe to my new channel here here you can follow me on instagram thank you so much for watching me do like share and subscribe and press the notification bell so that you can get notifications of the upcoming videos thank you all very much